Warning, some viewers may find this video hard to watch. Viewer discretion advised. Adrenaline driven. Heart pounding. Here comes the pit right along the right fender there. Unpredictable. Unbel oh dear. Okay, yeah. someone was in that car. These are America's fastest fugitives. There comes another passenger. Criminals going over the limit. He's at nine o'clock. Suspects swerving into oncoming traffic. Going the wrong way now, jump that median. And police racing to stop them. Once the helicopter's overhead, you're pretty much done at that point in time. We capture these high-speed chases from every angle. Goodness, look at this! Hearing from those who tried to make a break for it. The reason people do the police chases is because you have two options. One, you can either just pull over and go to jail. Or two, you can try to get home and maybe go to jail. And I'll take a maybe over a guarantee. And those in hot pursuit. This, this person's motivated. This person is going to take us for the ride. Chases from coast to coast. Now he's trying, look at this, again, ramming into more cars and trucks. From fleeing motorcyclists. Almost looks like he's looking back saying, come on, catch me if you can. To stolen ambulances. This is a situation where you are going to have every officer possible come to your aid. Buckle up. There's another pit in the intersection. Look at this, oh my God. Sheriffs are out, guns are drawn, hands are out. This is On The Run, Police Pursuits. <laughs> From the choppers in the air following the madness to police on the ground tailing runaway criminals, these suspects will do anything to get away. Oh, Look at this, he flies oh, this intersection oh, right goodness. into a power pole, oh, flipping wow. over, and there goes the sparks. Look at that. We begin in Texas, April 2nd, 2018. It's the middle of rush hour, and police officers are responding to a hot pursuit. Uh, I got him. He's at nine o'clock. Plates not on a vehicle, all tinted out. This is not someone who's just violating the vehicle code. They're probably up to committing some type of crime and we need to find out why. We are on the East Loop coming up on Market Street. Police chases, if they're not over in the first like four or five minutes, like you're probably, it's not gonna end well for whoever's being chased, right? Like once you give the police the opportunity to mobilize, you're probably not getting away. Three suspects inside a white Camaro are wanted for robbing a GameStop store. The trio is making a run for it on Interstate 10. What a lot of Sussex don't realize is their overt movements actually grab attention from us, and that's why we're able to key in on the vehicle. Then, of course, we all know once a helicopter's overhead, you're pretty much done at that point in time. So when we're covering a police pursuit, we're prepared for anything, and we try to prepare to not put anything on the air that's too graphic, because lots of times these pursuits could end with real human tragedy that affect uh, families and individuals differently. When we have any type of pursuit, especially depending on what the crime was, we have to assume that these people are armed and dangerous. We don't know if they're in possession of a firearm, of a knife, anything like that that could potentially harm us. The suspects jump onto the highway, run through a red light, and barely miss another car. It looks like he almost uh, almost sideswiped that vehicle or T-boned that vehicle right there. So those are the dangers that we think of as police officers. Suddenly, the car comes to a stop when the Camaro is blocked by a semi-trailer and an SUV. We as officers have to start making the judgment call. Is this pursuit becoming too dangerous and do we need to just go ahead and stop? The pursuit now turns into a standoff. It's actually awesome to see this many officers involved because now you have the ability to not only keep each other safe, but you have people that are maintaining visual on the vehicle the entire time in case there's any other suspects that are in the vehicle that have to be, you know, extracted. After a brief standoff, the suspects step out of the car and surrender. If you're gonna rob a GameStop, like how much could you possibly be getting from a GameStop? What are you gonna split it up between two people? Like, all right, hey, it's $60 for you. It's paying for the gas. Thankfully, no one is seriously hurt. April 20th, 2022. A wild chase is taking place in Santa Clarita, California. The guys, this is very, very dangerous. Yeah, Extremely they, dangerous. Right, considered armed, all three of them. Two juveniles and an 18-year-old are leading California's highway patrol on a high-speed pursuit. Look at this, oh my God. Oh my God. That was close. A near head-on collision, very, very close. Some chases provide all the excitement as the police pursuit is underway, but this one has a little bit of a different ending, and sometimes the foot pursuit can be more dramatic than the actual chase. 
the 18-year-old is wanted for murder in Texas and is driving the stolen Cadillac Escalade. This is where it starts to become dangerous. This is where we now have to start asking ourselves, do we really want to keep this pursuit going? Because right now, we could have the potential for serious bodily injury or loss of life on our community, and it's definitely not worth it. Two suspects are seen attempting to flee the vehicle on foot. One of them returns to the vehicle. These kids are struggling, and oh, look at this. Get he's getting in. back in the vehicle. The three suspects are considered armed and dangerous. And now the pursuit continues uh, through the Santa Clarita Valley. Guys, this is very, very dangerous. Yeah, extremely dangerous. Right. When you're young, it's smart to do the stupid stuff like this, because that's the only way you're going to get into a car like that. And if you're young, you're going to get it off much more leniently than if you're an adult. The driver, now speeding through Valencia Boulevard, jumps immediately into oncoming traffic. Oh my gosh. Oh, my God. oh into wrong oncoming way. lanes of traffic, going the wrong way now, jump wrong that median. Way. That's one of the things I actually don't understand when we have suspects that flee and they do drive on the opposite side of the road. I mean, not only are you putting your own life at risk, but you're putting the public at risk. The pursuit is getting more and more dangerous by the second. Look at this, oh my God. Oh my God! That was close. A near head-on collision. Very, very close. Ah, oh, I hate to see. They hate to see the opposite lane of traffic. The risk level goes up. You don't want to do that. Eastbound on Soledad. Eastbound Soledad. You could tell now he's looking for a place to dump the vehicle. There's multiple people inside that stolen SUV, and right now you could tell he's driving it just like he stole it. Okay, he's going in circles. He's really toying with this officer here, just doing a circle around this group of cars. I don't think they have anywhere to go just based off the fact that they're going in circles. I'm almost wondering if they know that this kind of dead ends into what looks like a neighborhood. And he's into this apartment complex now, which I think leads him to a dead end. We'll widen out just a second and see if that's the case. The stolen car stops at a dead end street with the driver and passenger jumping out of the vehicle and running through an apartment complex. CHP officer, he's going for a run. They're both jumping out. Driver and passenger jumping out of the vehicle, running through this apartment complex. The pursuit turns into a foot chase. The suspects scale fences, jump into backyards, and zigzag their way through the apartment block. You don't want to go into a place that's a dead end, because when you get to a dead end, your only option is foot, and unless you're practicing and you got good cardio, there's a good chance the cops are going to surround you, especially when they have a helicopter. The two individuals are now scrambling to find a spot to hide from the police. They approach a pool with innocent bystanders enjoying their afternoon. This is the scary part right here, I'll be honest with you. It's not so much taking the suspects into custody. This is where, depending on what they do, could bring some danger to the people that are here by the pool. After several minutes racing through the apartment complex, the two suspects surrender to officers. Within their line of sight here, here. there's are. the officers with their guns drawn approaching the suspects. Thankfully, appears they're finally giving up. One LAPD, one LA County Sheriff. Residents scramble for safety. That mom and her daughter trying to protect her and take her away from the pool. It was just uh, unbelievable to watch in the helicopter. If you didn't have a helicopter watching them, you would not know that they were in there and they could easily walk out without a problem. And they, these people in the pool probably have no idea no. who these people are or what it is that, you know, they're there for. When these chases transpire, you have people that are not acting rationally and that's generally gonna end in something spectacular or a, like, foot chase with the cops and then they tackle the guy with a canine or something like that. So it's always interesting to watch because it's, it's like watching a real life action film. November 9th, 2022. It's around 5 p.m. and a hot pursuit is taking place in Southern California. He's going so fast, there's nobody right behind him, but very erratic driving, getting off of the 91 freeway. A 33-year-old man driving a black sedan has failed to yield at a traffic stop. As he tries to thread the needle here, squeezing through these two cars at a red light. You can see some front end, front end damage on that bumper, now turning left onto Huntington Avenue. So we're in a residential area, and look at how fast he's going. You just need one kid on a bicycle, one family in a crosswalk, and, you know, easily hurt someone. The suspect is seen driving erratically. Through this residential neighborhood with nobody right behind him. So this, this person's motivated. This person is going to take us for the ride. At this moment, he gets out of the car in an attempt to steal a truck. We happen to be just about a mile away 
when this chase started. Right along the 91 freeway, it was a stolen sedan. He pulls into a neighborhood here, and you thought the chase was gonna end right here. He gets out of the car, I thought he was parking the car, and he was just gonna walk away. But instead, he tries to break into that pickup truck. Look at him. After an unsuccessful attempt, the suspect hops back into the sedan and continues driving. So he's getting back in that original car almost for a second. Looks like he was uh, intentionally getting in that pickup truck as if he also had the keys, but obviously was trying to break in there, now choosing to get away in that original pursuit vehicle. This is exactly the scenario that I'm telling you about that I fear. This guy doesn't care and he's gonna keep going until he is stopped. The suspect pulls into another neighborhood, ditches his car and attempts to steal a white van. Looks like he's trying to break in to the van. He finds an open door, an open door in that white van. And now you can see the black and whites pulling up right behind him. He's blocked in. All right, I mean, that's like a terrible choice. Like you downgraded your vehicle to one of the worst performing and handling vans on the planet. As police are pulling up, he hot wires the van and ends up ramming into that patrol car. Fullerton police think they have him boxed in here and he's playing bumper cars with Fullerton police. And he is just going back and forth. Now he's created some room to escape here. And he's, what else can those officers do? They really don't have many options. Here comes the backup. Here comes backup, head to head. This is dangerous, look at this, a head on. When we get back. As he gets out of the vehicle, crawls out of the passenger window. The chase continues as the suspect breaks into a home. Look at this, a confrontation inside the house, a family home. And fights an innocent family for the next getaway vehicle. Oh my goodness, look at this. He just stole the, oh my God, oh my goodness. We're back with our 33-year-old fugitive. A head-on, a head-on situation almost with that patrol car. A wild chase out of that development, almost got into a head-on collision with Fullerton police. Look at this, look at what we are seeing here. He is now back on Coronet Avenue. I think we would have much fewer of these chases if once you've crossed a th certain threshold, if the cops have the right to neutralize you like, like a Texas or a Florida would, there would not be so many chases like this. This guy is a career criminal who knows how to hotwire vehicles. This is someone who has no problem hurting other people to get away. So look at this, ramming past all of this traffic here as he tries to get back on the freeway. During the pursuit, the driver blows one of his back tires and drives into a gas station, sparks flying. He's going through that gas station without any tire on that left, right, that left rear wheel almost struck several vehicles there. A miracle nobody's gotten hurt yet. I'll tell you what, when you lose your tire, you've got much less controllability, braking diminished, everything is bad. At one point, the white van smashes into other cars. The sparks flying and that patrol, that officer right there, has to treat this with kid glove care. This is why F-17 right there finally said, enough is enough, we're not gonna let him back up at all. The suspect then crawls out of the passenger window and runs away from the police. We've been in situations that are, that are very scary and sometimes you unfortunately have suspects that they will do whatever they can to get away. They do not care who they hurt in the process. And he's now run into a residential alleyway here. After several blocks on foot, the man breaks into a home and steals a pickup truck. Look at this, a confrontation inside the house, a family home, and now we're gonna come around the front here. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, look at this. The residents in shock try to fight back. He's in the truck. He, he just he just got in that truck. There's a dog under that truck. Oh my goodness, look at this. The suspect successfully pulls off and drives away with the white truck. Oh my goodness, this is incredible. This is incredible. None of these people know what's going on because if you, if you got hit by a car, you're gonna be like, oh, what's going on? They don't realize that this guy can actually get out of his vehicle and then break their window and take over their vehicle. Obviously, he's still trying to get away. That's why that rim is getting it caught, caught on fire, because he's still trying to get away. Look at this, again, ramming into more cars and trucks. The incident, lasting almost an hour and a half, ends with the stolen utility truck crashes at a gas station. Unbelievable, head on with another car, and the, here comes, the, here comes uh, uh, not even a pit maneuver, but they rammed into it from behind, into a gas station, folks getting gas at the corner of Gale and Hacienda, into a gas pump, so this is where things get very, very scary because look at our backdrop. And the backdrop is what is what is on the other side of the suspect. 
is a gas station and this is just so unsafe. And they are now firing into the cab of that pickup truck. Deputies fire at the suspect. Unbelievable. I think the cops are finally shooting at this guy, which I don't blame them because this guy is doing anything to try to get away. I think they should just have like properly armored cop cars and they should just get in front of this guy and let him hit him. When you have a suspect like this who unfortunately is not going to comply, will hurt whoever they can in the process and you know is a threat to society, I mean you have to do everything possible to stop them. Uh, we don't know what kind of condition he's in, but you saw what I saw. I could not believe when they pop open the door of that truck and pull that suspect out alive, it had to be the luckiest day of his life. After a brief standoff, deputies approached the vehicle and detained the uninjured suspect, bringing an end to this senseless pursuit. So that guy, he's going to jail for a long time. Yeah, that guy had a really bad day, but he also ruined a lot of other people's days in the process. I'm sorry, I'm speechless. I mean, this is just, uh, you know, uh, incredible. When we come back, bank robbery suspects throw cash onto the streets of LA. Oh, he threw money at the people. I'm throwing money out. Eastbound, eastbound, come around left, come around left. Police plowing through the cash. You see people starting to run out eventually into the street. September 12th, 2012. Authorities in South Los Angeles are in hot pursuit of a Volvo SUV. The suspects are believed to be behind a bank robbery in Santa Clarita, California. This is a chase that really holds a place in LA lore. This was one where a bank robbery suspect was running from the cops, throwing money out the window. And I mean, what is crazier than a police chase through South LA with money flying all over the place? Okay, westbound, westbound, I'm sorry, eastbound, eastbound. This pursuit is about to become a made-for-Hollywood chase. Northbound Vermont, hold that, coming back westbound, throwing money out. Oh, he threw money at the people, that's what he, okay. So the reason why he did that, I'm gonna tell you right now, was to get those people to run into the street so that, to grab the money, and they would block the officers. That's exactly what's going on right there. As the men speed through a congested residential neighborhood, a suspect in the back seat throws money out of the car. Look at, look at that. Look at people running out in the street picking up this money. Residents scramble to pick up the cash, running into the street in front of police vehicles. You see people starting to run out eventually into the street. Look at that. They're just running right into the street. It's crazy. Sometimes suspects will think, hey, let me toss this out because then that's going to stop the officers because they're, they're going to want to pick up whatever evidence it is that we're leaving behind. I mean, we've had suspects throw guns out of cars. Everybody running into the streets there, right in that intersection there, he's throwing money out. Now, let, you know, be assured that that is a felony. You're not allowed to take that money. Bystanders start chasing down the suspect's vehicle for cash. This is, this is ludicrous. Like, it's almost like the cops are outnumbered. Like, this guy is, is a, is Robin Hood and they're, they're rooting for him. The driver navigates through a mob of people. Now it comes, now this is dangerous. So this is dangerous right here. There's so much traffic in his way. The chase comes to an end when a civilian vehicle stops the driver of the Volvo. Yeah, see, this is not a good idea. These are, these are citizens getting involved. Sheriffs are out, guns are drawn, hands are out. Okay, it looks like they're giving it up. They're gonna pull them out. Very dangerous situation here. Hundreds of onlookers descend on the scene. Deputies pull both suspects out of the car and take them into custody. The sheriff's not taking any more chances, pulling at least two suspects out of the, out of the car, clearing the right side of the car. So the guy, officer at the bottom of the screen is trying to keep people away. Yeah. They're trying to get more officers there to take these guys into custody because they're not giving up, obviously. And now the crowd is converging. See, and this is awful. This is, this is a situation where you are going to have every officer possible come to your aid. With so many people gathered, Los Angeles Police Department arrives in riot gear to restore order. These are LA County Sheriff's deputies who are pulling up at the end of the pursuit. So at the end of this pursuit, they must have called out for so much backup just for the crowd control alone. Look at that. There must be about 100 people trying to get their hands on some of the cash at the end of this pursuit. And this chase happened before the days of internet streaming. After the break, this yeah, is they are unbelievable. Oh dear. Okay, yeah, someone was in that car. A suspect in a stolen Kia taunts deputies and leads them on a wild chase through South Los Angeles. 
There's only so many outcomes for any given police chase, but yet despite that, they all have a different ending. <laughs> A suspect in a stolen SUV is leading police on an erratic chase to Los Angeles. This gets dangerous when you start driving at these speeds in these mm -hmm. residential neighborhoods. When you tell me I'm about to watch a Kia Sorento police chase, there's only one outcome. Because it's not even faster than the cop car. If you don't even at least pick something that's faster than the cop car, Kia Sorento, bad choice. The red Kia Sorento taunts officers by making illegal turns. I think there's a real voyeurism to police coverage because it's real life with real players, typically not the most stable people. And while there is real crisis involved with an actual police pursuit, people are just glued to see what's going to happen next. At one point, an LAPD officer tosses a spike strip in front of the vehicle. I think that? the spike strip is caught onto his I think there's tire. The spike strips, for those of you who don't know, are not necessarily designed to blow out a tire and instantly end a chase, but they are designed to put holes in the tire so the tire loses air slowly and the guy is forced to pull over with a flat tire. The SUV runs over it, and deputies use this opportunity to attempt a pit maneuver. Yeah, they are being Unbel very Oh dear. Okay, yeah, someone was in that car. Yeah, yeah, the PD officer is just pushing his car into another car. You know what, and the reason why they're doing the pit is because of the way this guy's driving, they now know they gotta get him in custody at this point in time. The airbags deployed on the passenger side, so, you know, it was enough to set the yeah. airbags off. It could have hurt the officers, it could have hurt the suspect, and in this case, again, you, you have to assume that the suspect is armed and dangerous. A shirtless driver emerges from the SUV. There's a lot of life choices that you're making when you walk out of your door shirtless when you're not at a beach destination in the morning and probably 30% of them are gonna end up like this, face down on the pavement. Officers immediately tackle him. The suspect is transported to a nearby hospital to check for possible injuries. A police pursuit is the kind of news story that tends to sell itself. You don't really need to dramatize the things that we see because it's already so wild and so dramatic. 